Hi guys, I'm here back at Castile um, Innovation Lab and I'm looking at the terrariums that we put together the last time you guys were in school. And as you can see, they've grown um, quite well, especially the ryegrass. The alfalfa is struggling and there is a little bit of mold, um, which is not terrible since I thought that they would be all dried out from the lack of watering. Um, the plants are taking, I don't, I can't see any roots for the plants and one of the plants is hidden, but it's still alive. So that's a great sign. And um, I picked this, this is um, from Mrs. Brown's class. This is Layla Izzy's, um, Ellie, Khaleesi and Jackson's terrarium. Um, to me, this looked like the uh, closest that anybody um, came to following the terrarium map. This is the map that I made for the kids and it shows that um, the star on the top um, was um, the locator um, or to teach the kids that what top, what's top, what's bottom. And they were told to plant wheat at the top, rye grass on the left, alfalfa on the right, and then there are two plants on the bottom. And as you can see, um, they pretty much follow the directions as they were told. These are the wheat plants. This is the rye grass. This is the alfalfa. It's kind of sprouting more in the middle, but you know, it's the closest that anybody came to following directions. And these are the plants. There's an ivy in here, and then there's a, it looks like a pothos. Anyways, um, just wanted to show you guys how the terrariums were doing. Everybody's terrarium pretty much looks like this. The grass is overgrown. The alfalfa is struggling. I did see one terrarium where I think no alfalfa was growing. Um, so first we wanted to observe our terrariums. Um, what changes do we observe? Well, um, like I said, the ryegrass is growing great. The alfalfa is struggling a little bit. A lot of um, the alfalfa in the classroom is moldy, um, but it's the soil is still, well, it's dry, um, but not um, d desert dry. So that's, that's a great sign that the covers on them kept some of the moisture in. Also, um, which seeds have sprouted? It looks like all of our seeds have sprouted. Um, there are some alfalfa seeds that haven't sprouted on the, on the side. And um, the next question that the book asks is, which have grown the most? Well, um, the ryegrass, it looks like has grown the most. The wheat grass, the wheatgrass is almost as tall, but as you can see, not as abundant, but we didn't plant, we only planted 10 wheat seeds, so that's um, fine. And um, have the cuttings changed? Now the cuttings, the cuttings were the, the there's ivy and then pothos, but they, they, they're just one leaf of each. So they haven't really grown much, but I'm hoping that their roots have taken hold in the soil and the fact that they're still alive is a good sign. And the next question is, can you see the roots in the soil? Um, you can definitely see roots, the grass roots, on the side here. And maybe, oh, and totally on the bottom. So that's great. And has the soil changed? The soil um, looks the same as when we planted, just dry. It just needs to be watered. And today um, we're going to add animals into our terrariums. So I brought some dirt <coughs> with pill bugs. I had snails in here, but I took out the snails. So, and then I have worms in here somewhere. Okay, here's a worm. Worms are very good for soil. And this is a nice big fat one. So here's a worm. Oh, he's very wiggly. So here's a worm. We'll add. Oh, he's a really good looking worm. We're going to add him into our terrarium. And we'll add some pill bugs here. He's rolled up. I'm going to add him into our terrarium. And here's another pill bug. I'll add him into our terrarium. And I thought I had more worms in here. I can't find any. Oh, 
there's another pill bug. I'll add him. And great. So now um, what we want to know is um, what do animals need to live in our terrarium? Now um, we've been going through a lot of living things with the um, with you guys, so I'm sure you know that um, these animals need air and water, um, shelter, and food, and um, they will all get that from this little habitat that we made for them. There's a lot of there's a lot of air because of the cover has holes in it, um, and the, I will water it for them so that they will have water, but they, they have plenty of food in the grass and in the soil for them to survive. And um, they these particular animals, I don't think need very much sun since they um, typically hide underground and under um, rocks. So I might put a little rock in there for the pill bugs to hide under, but that is um, pretty much it. And um, we, I will continue to monitor the growth of our terrariums and hopefully the, um, we'll be able to see how the animals do in here. And um, hope you guys are staying safe and washing your hands and I will um, see you back in class. What do animals need? Animals live in different habitats. Some animals live in water. Others live on land. Some animals live on other animals, but all animals have the same basic needs. Animals need food. They eat plants and animals. Animals that eat plants are herbivores. Animals that eat other animals are carnivores. Animals need water. Most land animals drink fresh water. Some animals get water only from their food. Land, land animals need air. Air contains oxygen that animals need to live. Animals need shelter. Shelter protects animals from weather and other animals. Burrows and nests are safe places for young animals. A terrarium is a small habitat made in a container. Worms, snails, insects, and plants can live together in a habitat. Animals are living things. Plants are living things too. All living things have basic needs. What basic needs does a terrarium provide for plants and animals? Thinking about what, what do animals need? What are the basic needs of animals? Why do animals need shelter? Look at the terrarium on page 32. How is it like the one that you made in class? Why do animals need plants?